tell you that how wonderful that was. I read the newspaper, and on September 5th, 1999, I danced with my son at his wedding. All things I had not thought I would ever be able to do. Okay, we're going to have to jump skip real fast. On amplogen, biomarkers go away, I get better. Off amplogen, biomarkers come back, I get worse. Um, after I had that one little learning lesson, we weren't gonna, I wasn't going to get off get off it ever. My family had decided we'd incorporate it into our income base. My husband has a way of earning money. He's good at it. And that was it. Unfortunately, the FDA had other plans. The uh, head of my practice died. The FDA took the study away. They wouldn't give it back. And I thought I might have a year. I only had seven months. In September 2008, I'm happily skipping down the street. The manhole cover's been taken away. I go into the manhole cover. I am back in the sewer. It's that fast. It's that awful. Fortunately, I already had an appointment with Dr. Peterson, who I was now seeing as my specialist, and I didn't have Dr. Wallace anymore. And I was going to see him at the end of September. He, over the course of 2008, 2009, this is what I had. I, was, I had the 37 KDA RNA cell. My natural killer cell function was 2%. I had an abnormal cytokine pattern, but I don't know. Which one? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was positive at first for Epstein-Barr. All of my crashes always started with Epstein-Barr. Then it would go away and it would come back. Um, I always had, during the crash, once I was sick again, HHV6 variant A, and then Dr. Dr. Peterson found I also had HHV7, cytomegalovirus, and three strains of Coxsackie B. I don't know if they're the right strains. I'm going to have to go home and look that up. My VO2 max test was 14.5, below 15. I had an abnormal spec scan. Now, what are the odds that all that would be going on and that it's unrelated? What are the odds that all those symptoms I had were unrelated to the markers I gave you and the diseases I had? I don't think the odds are great that there's no relationship. Oh, I forgot one test. Uh, I did... I also was in the original science study. I tested positive for XMRV by both uh, antibodies and in the serum. Hmm, maybe that's involved too. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm way too past the point where we can ask, what's the cause? Personally, I think there's cofactors. I think you have to have a mix of causes myself, but I don't know. Well, what I want is treatment for people, and I happen to do well on amplogen. At this point, my family was getting desperate. We tried an antiviral, and my liver said no. So I moved to Incline Village, Nevada, away from my husband of 35 years, who supports me and keeps me going. And uh, I've been back on amplogen for a year, and that is why I'm standing here talking to you, because last year I wasn't able to come to the SITSAC meeting. I was too sick. I did testify by phone, but I couldn't stand like this. Um, all right, now I'm going to switch gears again. <laughs> Here's this book. This is called Lost Voices. The first picture in this book is of a girl named Naomi. Naomi got sick at the age of 13. She is now 30. Naomi's picture, now I'm trying to find it. Well, most people don't know this. I know a lot of people who got sick as teenagers and are entering their 40s. I got sick at 44. Hmm? Oh, sorry, yeah. I got sick at 44. I married the love of my life. I had two kids. I had two grandchildren. I had a really good career. I'm a little sorry that it couldn't go further than it did, but it was okay. And I was able to get a research for it, so it must have been okay. But I know so many people through Internet who never did get married, never did have kids, never had a career. They never had a life. All they've had is this disease. And that is sinful. That is wrong. That should not be. Now, there are... There are one million adults in the United States with this disease. 150,000 have a diagnosis. Where are the other 850,000 people? If we use the ME literature, there are 25% who are like I was, housebound or bedridden. 250,000 people, where are they? Where are the children? We know they're there. The only ones we see are the ones whose parents are professionals and have, have been able to get them help and diagnosis. And the school boards dump on these kids and their parents all the time. They put kids in foster care for the sin of having CFS, and then you have to go rescue them. 
It's a nightmare for them. To me, what's important is the kids. Casey Farrow had myocarditis. He had a virus in his heart muscle for years. The autopsy showed both old and new scarring. But he had a diagnosis at chronic fatigue center. Yeah, yeah. What's the dumpy soil? You just, you just think you have what your mother has. I, I'd ignore it. Um, I do not have chronic fatigue syndrome, according to the CDC's website. I do have myalgic encephalomyelitis, according to the World Health Organization's and the Ramsey definition. I do have MECFS, according to the Canadian definition. I would say I have myalgic But, you know, myalgic encephalomyelitis is a British Commonwealth name. Let's, uh, let's use the name that... Alex Shelikoff chose in the United States instead of myalgic encephalomyelitis, epidemic neuromyasthenia. That was the United States name for this disease. Hmm, wonder why they quit using it. This is a contagious disease at some course in its illness. This is a terrible disease. This disease attacks children. This disease has killed people's children. Washington, D.C., what part of serious do you not understand? What part of urgent do you not understand? As Pat's, my daughter is now sick at 30. She's going to be seeing Dr. Montoya in a month. And I have a seven-year-old granddaughter, and I hope she doesn't end up with this disease, too. <laughs> How long do we have to go through this, and what does it take? Because let me tell you something that we learned in public health a long time ago. Diseases know no boundaries between class or education or anything else. And anybody in this room can end up with what I have. And so can your children. If you don't put a stop to this, that is what will happen. There will be more cluster outbreaks. There will be more people sick. Got to stop it. So for Casey Farrow, for Allison Hunter, the Allison Hunter Foundation suggested this from Australia. Allison Hunter was a 19-year-old girl who died of complications from the disease. For Allison Hunter, for Casey Farrow, for Sophia Mirza, for, for all the children who get this disease, if you don't want to do anything for us adults, for God's sakes, do something for the children. Children have died from it. It is serious. I think you people are on the right track. I think you mean well. I want you to understand this is not minor. Please help us. Thank you very much.